Welcome back, friends and enemies. It is May, which means I have started my middle grade reading. Middle grade May. <laughs> um, I'm starting with a book that was published the same year I was born. <laughs> so when I hold this up and it says 25th anniversary edition, know that I am not 25 because this was published in 84, okay? So I've read Sanders and Arrows, The House on Mango Street. Um, this is interesting in a way I'm not quite sure I like, but not hate as much as the people online. Holy shit. Um, this is not poetry. It's not one long cohesive story. It is not even short stories. It is just little vignettes. Like some are like a page, literally a page. Um, so it's told in little vignettes of Esperanza who lives in the house on Mango Street. <laughs> um, it's like little observations about the neighborhood and her friends and how the family works. Um, but yeah, it's it's told in vignettes and it feels sort of like the same way that an adult would remember their childhood. Just like little fleeting memories of things and like memories from different times kind of get pushed together because they're about one person or something that goes together and so that's just kind of like how your brain works to put it together. That's what it feels like. Um, so it is meant as like middle grades. It's classed as a young adult because in the fucking 80s young adult would have been like 12 year olds. <laughs> Fucked up. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's told like that. It's not an overarching plot of anything. It's just growing up in this neighborhood. Um, and like, in addition to growing up the neighborhood, growing up poor, growing up, you know, Latina, growing up a woman. <laughs> and just like the little things of like, what your family is like, you know, like, you're like, okay, well, I love this person. I don't love this person, my family. And it's just kind of like how your family works together. It's like, what makes a house versus a home? Like all these kind of like little things that you don't really think about until you're kind of like getting older. And so in this case, Esperanza is like 11, 12, maybe. Um, yeah, it's, I'm not, I'm not sure kids would enjoy it in this day and age. <laughs> Um, but I could certainly see, like, people my age who read it when they were kids, reading it now, enjoying it. This is my first time reading it. I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. Um, <laughs> I've posted online, I just fell in love with this book. Yeah, I wasn't done reading the introduction when I said that. I, apparently I'm in love with the introduction. <laughs> and so the introduction is enough for me to go, hey... I'm probably going to try to read something else by Sandra Cisneros in the future. <laughs> so yeah, um, pretty sure this is considered a, a classic at this point, you know, for how, a little bit for how old it is and just more of a like, this feels like something everyone was supposed to read or have read to them or whatever when they were younger. And so it's just very like universally read. I have some thoughts on reviews I saw for this book, believe it or not. Um, people are horrid. <laughs> people are horrid. Um, mostly criticism of the style. Mostly. But in criticism of the style, they're also very much being racist. So like, <laughs> people, people on the internet, get them in a keyboard and they'll type literally anything. So this does have over 191,000 readings on Goodreads. As I said, it is a classic. It is something that people are often told to read. And so, you know, it's been read. Uh, it has 3.69 stars, which is not what I expected based on how beloved I'd seen this book be online. <laughs> yeah, that. Uh, yeah, it's definitely, like, I, I went through and I read the one and two star reviews because I was like, what am I missing other than the style being kind of odd? Like, there's no quotation marks when people are speaking, which is, like, what I said. It's more like a memory of these people rather than straight up happening in front of you, you know? Um, and yeah, yeah, those those are critical of the style. It's a style I neither love nor hate. Sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't. 
I'm indifferent to it at this point in time. But, uh, yeah, just people be racist. People be racist. But, like, at the same time, like I said, she is Latina. She is growing up in, like, this neighborhood in, in Chicago. <laughs> and it does feel like just a memory of, like, childhood. And, like, there were some of them that I was reading where I was like, okay, I did not grow up Latina. <laughs> I did not grow up in Chicago. I grew up in a little town that was predominantly white. I'm still here. And <laughs> I still, I look at it and I'm like, oh, I remember when something similar happened to me when I was a kid. Like, it brought up memories and, like, you're like, oh, right. Like, that's how that feels. And so, like, I don't have a problem with it. But, like, I'm not shouting from the rooftops about it either. It's just kind of where we are on this. Did you enjoy it? <laughs> Have you read it? <laughs> I do love the cover. I think it's a very fun cover. Also, mine is longer because I got large print. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> um, but yeah, overall, overall I enjoyed it, okay? Like I said, not screaming from the rooftops or anything, but I enjoyed the little, the little trip it took me on. Reminded me of some things of my childhood despite being so vastly different. It's all, that's all I really have to say about that. I don't know. There's, there's no particular things to pick out to say I loved or hated that. Like every once in a while, there was just a line where I was just like, oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> but some of those were also in the introduction that she wrote. So I'm like, yes, it's just, maybe I want to go a little more adult with my next Sandra Cisneros, obviously. Because I think this is the only... This might be the only uh, young adult children's thing that she's written. I'm not 100% sure on that. Anyways, um, have you read it? Did you like it? Let me know because apparently this book is polarizing. <laughs> uh, thanks for hanging out. I will see you around next time. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to like and subscribe.